Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NGM Power Supplies. This presentation explains how to configure and use the different features of the NGM series power supplies. The NGM is a benchtop DC power supply available either in one or two channel models. Both models support 20 volts and 3 or 6 amps per channel. In addition to advanced protection functions, the NGM also supports many useful features, such as ramp and arbitrary output, statistics, logging, digital input and output triggers, and remote sensing. More advanced features of the NGM include battery simulation and the ability to function as an electronic load or sync. The NGM is configured through a touchscreen interface, but remote control via USB, Ethernet, or GPIB are also possible. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll show you how to configure and use the NGM and its most important features. Let's start with connectors. The NGM has two pairs of standard banana-style connectors on the front panel. In two-channel models, one set of outputs is used for each channel, and in one-channel models, the second set of connectors, colored black, are used for sense connections, something we'll discuss a little later in this presentation. The NGM outputs are both floating and galvanically isolated. This means that the two channels in a dual-channel NGM can be used as separate and independent power supplies. This in turn makes it possible to connect channel outputs in series or in parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the NGM can provide higher voltages than would be possible with a single channel. And, by connecting them in parallel, higher currents are supported. For example, we could combine two 20 volt channels in series in order to get an output voltage of 40 volts. Or, we could combine two 6 amp channels in parallel for a combined output current of up to 12 amps. Voltage and sense connections can also be made on the rear of the NGM using terminal blocks, which contain sockets for both voltage and for sense wires. Note that both front and rear voltage connectors should not be used at the same time. To enter voltage and current, start by pressing the home button. The values for voltage and for current limit can be entered using either the touch screen or by using the rotary knob. Confirm values either using the check mark key or by pressing the knob. To enable output on a single channel NGM, simply press the output hard key. On a dual channel NGM, each channel is individually enabled and then output is used to turn on all enabled channels. In both cases, the channel key color indicates the operating mode, something we'll come back to in just a moment. A dual channel NGM display shows both channels simultaneously, but the expand button can be used to view a single channel in the larger format used on single channel NGMs. In expanded view, statistics in the form of max, min, and average power, voltage, and current are shown on the right. Stats can be reset and restarted by clicking on the Stats counter. To return to the Collapse view, use the Collapse button. The NGM displays the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. For each channel, configured values are shown in boxes, and the measured or readback values are shown above them. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. Values in green indicate that the channel is operating in constant voltage mode, and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's pause for a minute and explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if load resistance, and therefore current, change. Note that if load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance could therefore lead to a current that's high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply operates in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the NGM. 
We configure the output voltage to be 2 volts and enter a current of 400 milliamps. The NGM will hold the output voltage steady, or constant, at 2 volts, even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage and current are displayed in green. Now let's decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still remains constant at 2 volts while output current changes, but only as long as the limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the NGM automatically switches to constant current mode and reduces the output voltage to the point where the output current does not exceed the configured limit of 300 milliamps. When operating in constant current mode, values of voltage and current are displayed in red. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases where we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes based on a user configured pattern or sequence. The NGM supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely ramp and arbitrary. Let's take a closer look at both of these. As the name implies, ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in output voltage. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which the voltage remains constant. Ramp settings are configured on a per channel basis by pressing the settings key and then choosing the channel and ramp. The ramp time must then be entered. Recall that this is the time needed to go from zero volts to the configured output voltage. After enabling ramp, the ramp icon will appear in the channel display. Unlike ramp, which linearly increases voltage from zero to a defined value, arbitrary switches the NGM output between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. Each one of these levels has a user-defined value and duration, and the sequence can be repeated multiple times. To use arbitrary waveforms, a profile must first be defined. This can be done on the NGM using Settings Device Arb Editor. An arbitrary profile consists of a series of points with values for voltage, current, time, and whether or not interpolation is used between points. The plus and minus buttons can be used to add or remove points from the table. Two additional parameters are also required. The first is the repetition count, that is, how many times to repeat this sequence. If the repeat count is finite, the end behavior must also be defined. The output can be turned off, or the last value in the sequence can be held. Sequences created with ARB Editor can also be saved and loaded. Channel menus are used to select and enable arbitrary waveforms. Simply click on Arbitrary, select a profile to load, and then Enable. The arbitrary waveform will be started when the channel and output are enabled, and an icon will appear in the channel bar when an arbitrary sequence is being output. The next topic is protection functions. These are used to protect the attached load from excessive voltage, current, or power by disabling the output when a user-defined threshold is crossed. Protection functions are configured by pressing Settings, then the Channel and Output. Note that protection functions are configured and enabled or disabled independently for each channel. Both overvoltage and overpower protection are activated when a user-defined voltage or power threshold is crossed. As with other forms of protection, the channel is turned off when the protection is activated and output has to be manually restarted. Visual indication in the form of blinking icons are used to show when overvoltage or overpower protection has been activated. Overcurrent protection, also called an electronic fuse, is activated when the current drawn by the load exceeds a configured threshold. Note that unlike overvoltage and overpower, the current limit is not entered in the protection menu, but is rather taken from the main voltage and current settings. As before, if protection is activated, the channel is turned off and must be manually restarted. There are two delay parameters associated with an electronic fuse. Fuse delay time is the time between when the overcurrent threshold is crossed and when the output is deactivated. Fuse delay at output on is the amount of time the NGM will wait after power on before applying the fuse. This can be used to prevent the fuse from being activated by high inrush currents. In a dual channel NGM, a fuse on one channel can also be linked to the other channel. In this case, if overcurrent is activated on one channel, 
both channels are disabled. And like overvoltage and overpower, a blinking icon in the channel display indicates that overcurrent protection has been activated. Safety limits are another type of protection that limits the configurable range of output voltage and or current. Safety limits prevent the user from being able to configure or enter values outside of a defined range. They don't disable output like the other protection types discussed earlier, but an audible alert is sounded whenever a user tries to configure a value outside of these limits. Safety limits are configured and enabled per channel in the form of maximum and minimum values of voltage and current. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the NGM, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include output delay, remote sense, digital voltmeter, data logging, electronic load, battery simulation, digital input output triggers, and remote interfacing or a control. Normally, voltage is present at the outputs immediately after output is enabled. However, the NGM also allows you to configure a delay between when the output is enabled and when voltage is present at the output terminals. During this delay, the channel key blinks green and delay appears in the channel display. Next, let's talk about remote sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote Sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In Remote Sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, there's almost no current flow in these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using the sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. Remote Sense is automatically enabled on the NGM when connected sense leads are detected. Sense connections, labeled S plus and S minus, are available on the front of the single channel NGM201, and sense connections are available on the rear terminals for both single and dual channel NGM models. When Remote Sense is active, a small icon appears in the channel display. The NGM also supports a built-in digital voltmeter per channel. This allows voltage to be measured anywhere, not just where the NGM output leads are connected. The DVM lead connections are made using the terminal block on the rear of the unit. When DVM is activated, the normal channel output voltage display is replaced by the DVM voltage reading, in white, and the letters DVM are displayed to the left of the result. In normal operating mode, the NGM displays the measured or readback values of voltage, current, and power, and these can be logged to a CSV or comma-separated value file. Logging is configured globally for all channels under Settings, Device, Logging. The logging interval and duration, or mode, are configurable, and the log data can be stored either on a USB stick or internally. To turn logging on or off, simply use the Logging On-Off switch. In addition to the standard logging mode, the NGM also supports higher speed logging of voltage and current at rates of up to half a million samples per second. This fast log functionality is configured per channel under the Channel tab. Data can be written to USB in the form of a binary file, or it can be remotely retrieved using a Skippy-based client. In fast log, the sample rate and logging duration are specified by the user. The NGM also includes a built-in utility for converting these binary files to CSV format. There are three channel output modes on the NGM. Most often, the NGM is used as a source, that is, current flows out of the supply and is delivered to a load. However, the NGM output mode can also be set to sync mode. In sync mode, current flows into the supply and the NGM acts as an electronic load. If output mode is left as auto, the NGM will act either as a source or as a sync, depending on the voltage present at the terminals. Note that in sync mode, current will be displayed as a negative value. Similar to source mode, in sync mode, the NGM display is green when operating in constant voltage mode, that is, when the current flowing into the NGM is less than the set current. The NGM switches to constant current mode if the incoming current is being limited to a user-configured value. The third mode is constant resistance mode, in which the NGM looks like a fixed resistor with a user-specified value. 
In this mode, current flowing into the NGM is the external voltage divided by this configured resistance. The NGM can also simulate user-defined batteries, and the simulated battery will either be discharging or charging depending on the connected load or voltage level. The behavior of the battery is defined using a battery model that describes various battery parameters at different storage levels or states of charge. These models are stored as CSV files, but as we'll see, they can also be directly created and edited on the NGM as well. One advantage of a simulation over a normal battery is that the state of charge of the simulated battery can be instantaneously changed or set via the GUI. In other words, the NGM can jump to any state of charge without the need to wait for the battery to normally discharge or charge to the desired level. Before we show how to configure battery simulation, let's pause for a moment to talk about the parameters that are used in creating a battery model. The first is the total battery capacity expressed in amp hours. A 200 milliamp hour battery can provide 200 milliamps for one hour, 100 milliamps for two hours, etc. As mentioned a moment ago, state of charge is the available battery capacity as a percentage. If state of charge is 85%, this means that 15% of the total battery capacity has already been used. In this example, our battery with an 85% of charge now has a capacity of only 170 milliamp hours. Open circuit voltage is the voltage between the terminals with no load applied. The terminal voltage, on the other hand, is the voltage between the terminals when the load is connected. This is always less than the open circuit voltage. Like all batteries, the simulated battery has an internal resistance or equivalent series resistance. Note that terminal voltage is a function of both the actual load resistance as well as the battery's internal resistance. To simulate a battery, we specify the necessary parameters using the battery model editor. Specifically, we need to define the open circuit voltage and internal resistance at different states of charge. The NGM will interpolate between the values as needed. In addition, the initial state of charge and any current limits are also configurable. Battery simulation is then enabled per channel under Battery Simulator. Simply select the battery model and enable. The battery simulator display shows the battery parameters. The total battery capacity is given in amp hours and the current state of charge is shown as a percentage and in units of amp hours. Pressing Set State of Charge allows you to instantaneously change to a different battery level. The user-configured open circuit voltage and internal resistance for the current state of charge are also shown, as well as the terminal voltage and current, which are a function of the connected device or load. And recall that the battery status will be either discharging or charging, depending on the voltage at the NGM's terminals. The optional digital input-output connector, located on the rear panel of the NGM, provides a variety of trigger in-out and event signals on different pins. These signals can be used to notify, control, or interact with other devices. For example, the trigger out voltage can be configured to change if the supply enters constant current mode. The digital I.O. interface supports a very wide range of functions, so please see the NGM documentation for a complete list of supported input and output actions. Another way that the NGM can interact with other devices is using remote interfaces. The NGM supports three different methods of remote access. USB, LAN, and GPIB. All of these interfaces support programmatic control, in which standardized Skippy commands can be used to configure the NGM and retrieve results. The LAN connection also enables a remote GUI via VNC, file transfer using FTP, and web browser access for administrative purposes. To learn more about using these remote access features, as well as how to create and execute programmatic control of the NGM, please see the user documentation. Let's end with a brief summary. Rode and Schwartz NGM Benchtop DC power supplies are available in both one and two channel models. The NGM is easily configurable via the touchscreen and front panel, but can also be remotely controlled. Other useful features we've covered in this presentation include ramp and arbitrary output, different types of protection functions, remote sense, integrated DVM, data logging, digital IO, battery simulation, and the ability to function as an electronic load or sink. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NGM Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about the NGM or power supplies in general, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.